Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm going to make more fish fertilizer. I realized I'm out of more fertilizer. It's changing of the seasons. It's actually my winter, so I should have made this a month or two ago. As I'm prepping my garden, I want to re-inoculate the soil with this really high quality fish fertilizer. Instead of buying subpar fish fertilizer, I'm going to make my own fermented fish fertilizer called a fish hydrolysat. Yesterday with my little cousin, we went fishing at the wharf and we loaded up on Pacific Coast anchovies. I wanted half a bucket, but we ended up with meh, a quarter of a bucket. I've made my own fish fertilizers maybe four, five, six times. I'm ready to do it again. Today I've brought some upgrades. I will show you those upgrades later in the video. I already have the fish. I already collected some rainwater from my wheelbarrow out back. And I have a fresh gallon of unsulfured molasses. This is going to be the sugar source that feeds the bacteria initially. So first step, I'm going to add molasses to the fish. I'm gonna to try to add equal parts molasses to fish by weight. I weighed the fish, I have about four pounds of fresh anchovies. I figure that's gonna be a quart or maybe half a gallon of molasses. Even if that's not exactly right, that's still a lot of molasses, that's pretty good. Now I have the rainwater I collected earlier. For this, I'm going to try to add three to one. So I'm going for maybe a little bit more than half full, half of this five gallon bucket full of water now. Now, if you've watched in my other videos about making my own fish hydrolysat, my own fermented fish fertilizer, I just let the whole fish go or the carcass go. I don't chop it up or blend it. Where a lot of videos they do. And that's the first surprise for today. So now everyone please pick up your 750 watt industrial immersion blender like I'm sure we all have at home. Obviously I'm joking. This was a present to myself. It was less than $200 so it's not ridiculous expensive. I mean it's expensive but it's gnarly. I haven't used it yet. See how nice and shiny, so shiny it is? Let's blend up this anchovy molasses rainwater soup first. That worked really, really well. There's nothing left in there. That worked really, really well. Everything's completely pureed. It's completely liquefied already. That was partially because I've used small anchovies for the first time. Historically, when I've made this, I've made it with rockfish and ling cod. I made a batch with salmon. I made a batch with just a halibut carcass. Never, and those are all big fish. Never have I made it with small fish. The, one of the benefits of making it with small fish is that individually they retain less heavy metals and less toxins from the environment. So I'm putting less heavy metals, less toxins onto my garden and then into my food source where I would be with a larger fish sometimes. Not horribly or anything, but I'm still gonna do it when I need to. Another benefit of using anchovies, being small Pacific Ocean fish, is that they're really high in omega-3, it's really high in fatty, fatty acids, there's a lot of amino acids in there. There's a lot of good stuff in that fish that's gonna now go feed my garden microbes. I'm making my own lactic acid bacteria serum for this, so it's just a concentrated lactic acid bacteria. It still needs another day or two, so this is going to ferment without it for a day or two, but I'll add it when it's ready. I'm going to cap this and let the ferment begin. 
That lid right now is solid. It should or could be permeable, like a screen or something like that. But I'm gonna be opening the lid every couple of days to burp it, so that'll work just as well. We want an exchange of bacteria and an exchange of natural yeast in the air to help that break down that fermentation of the fish product and the sugars. To make lactic acid bacteria serum, also known as labs, I washed organic rice with dechlorinated water. You get that milky water when you rinse rice, that's starchy water. That's gonna be the food source for the lactic acid bacteria. Paper towel and rubber band for a lid and let it sit on my counter for about five days. After five days, I took a half a gallon of organic whole milk put it into a larger glass jar, then added the rice water. I let that sit for several days until there was a separation of curds and whey. When there was a separation of curds and whey, I poured off everything into a large bowl with a strainer and a cheesecloth. I collected the liquid and that is my lactic acid bacteria serum. All right. Time to add the labs, the lactic acid bacteria serum to my fish fertilizer. It's been raining, it's still a little drizzly. Nice. Let's give that a good blend. All the thicker stuff floated to the top. All right. I'm gonna add the whole two cups, the whole pint. All right. Give that a few weeks, two to four weeks. We'll check it weekly. This is week two. Well, it looks a little bit gross. It does not stink, which is pretty cool. All right, yeah, week two looks great, but it does not look done yet. Let's give it two more weeks. I brought the ferment inside. It's been cold, so I want the ferment to go faster. Warmer temperatures, it's gonna ferment faster. Colder temperatures, it's gonna ferment slower. So I'm at four weeks today. It's been inside for a couple of days. I'm ready to give it one more mix and then bottle it up into this container for future use. Make sure you label everything I'm not using paper, paper fades. This is, I think, a tree label. So it's aluminum foil and you scratch it right in there. So I've got a funnel, I've got my good stuff here. Let's check it out. Woo! Smells like anchovies. It doesn't smell rotten. You can see oil on the top. There's so much oil in the anchovies. All right, there it is. My first batch of anchovy fermented fish fertilizer. Exactly three gallons. This is super concentrated, so I'm going to shake it up every time I need to use it. And then I'm only going to add maybe, maybe a few tablespoons or a half a cup per gallon of water. So make sure you dilute it heavily. Even though it's totally organic, you can still sometimes burn your plants by pouring too much on it. Never pour it on there just like this. That's not good for the plants. That'll overload them. So water it down heavily. And I'm gonna add mine at least every two weeks. 
And in the peak of my my growing season, I'll probably add this with my watering once a week. So since it is organic, you can add it more than a chemical syn uh, synthetic fertilizer, but still water it down and use it in moderation. And it doesn't even have a bad smell. It smells almost like Worcestershire sauce or, or Unagi sauce. It smells a little bit fishy, but sweet at the same time. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, anything like that, put them in the comments. i am only been doing this for a few years, so it's not like I'm an expert. I'm just figuring things out. Um, I do have a degree, a bachelor's degree in environmental science. That's going to help me a little bit with some of this stuff, but nothing anybody else can't figure out just as well. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Take care. Bye-bye.